How's it going guys? It's Cole from See Through Panel. Wanted to do an overview of Black Sad as a series, not just this first book. So I reread this first book, which is the three original um, novels that finally made their way to the United States as one package. Then we have the first sequel called The Silent Hell and the other sequel called Amarillo. I do own the most recent volume titled They All Fall Down Part 1, but considering I just reread about five volumes of Black Sad, I felt like I should just put this aside and wait for part two to come out so I make sure it's a one coherent package. Um, I may end up just reading this on its own and covering it later if it's if I just really, really feel the urge to read it because this series is super bingeable. But um, for now, I've only read... Uh, like I said, the first three in this book, Silent Hell and Amarillo. So, Black Sad is created by Juan Diaz Canales and Juanjo Guarnido, with writing by Canales and art by Guarnido. It is published by Dark Horse in America and retails for 30 bucks for this first book. Um, I believe all of these are in print, last I checked. I just recently got Amarillo, so I know that for sure is in print. But I can't imagine they would let these fall out of print. They're pretty pretty popular books, um, especially overseas. And uh, when they made their way here, they got very, very highly regarded by uh, comic fans. So I really enjoy it. It's um, a crime story, a noir story. So the protagonist pictured on the cover... Black Sad is a cat, and he has his um, kind of, let's say, assistant Weekly, if I could find Weekly. I believe Weekly is basically a weasel, right there. He's a journalist, a photographer that follows Black Sad around often, and um, the basic premise is just... Black Sad is a private investigator, and he gets into all kind of um, hard-boiled uh, crime scenarios. <laughs> Think of it like a, a Brubaker and Phillips story. Brubaker and Phillips do a very similar thing. It's very much a um, mid-1900s, um, just very grim and gritty crime story. Um, it, the tone changes a little bit in the sequels, but for these first three, I felt they were very, very... Um, well contained in just that classic crime genre whereas the others kind of branch out in terms of genre but uh, i should say before i get too deep i won't be spoiling anything here it's not really a review it's more of an overview and me showing off the books and telling you how much i like them and why i like them and why you should read them so um i may spoil things by flipping the pages i probably already have if you're interested in this look away um but i won't be saying anything that would spoil the books uh, and they are very violent books, and they also have some nudity in them, so I'm going to be really carefully making sure I don't show any of that off. As you can see, although the characters are rendered as animals, they are very expressive. Guarnido is very, very um, talented at showing off expression through just features like this owl here. And um, Canales' writing, I think, is really, really compelling to me because of how human all his characters are. He's got a very strong um, sense of character for each one. They're very consistent. You know exactly what they're about. You might not guess what they're going to do, but when they do it, you think that's perfect for that character. Of course they would do that. He's very, very consistent in that way. And um, here's a little... I also love the use of color here. It's painted, I believe, because um, Guarnido, in the second half of A Silent Hell, it's about a 60-some-odd page story, and then the whole other half of the book is just uh, him breaking down his color uh, theory and process, which I'll show off because it's really neat, really good insight. So as you see, it's a, it's a thick book, but that the story is actually only about... 60 some pages and then you get to yes so I'm gonna flip to the last page it's not very revealing for the plot but if you care about that it is uh looks like 54 pages 
And then we get the watercolor story, which is Juanjo Guarnido's uh, working through almost, you know, I would say pretty much every other panel of this whole book and how he approached it in terms of lighting, character design, framing. Mostly talking about color here and the painting process, but he gets very deep in the storytelling. And I thought it was just fantastic to read this whole thing. Almost as interesting itself as the book was. So I, would, I mean, and I think Silent Hell would be my favorite of them. Uh, like I said, this isn't a review, but real quickly, Silent Hell is kind of a... Uh, it's not linear storytelling. It jumps around in time. As you can see, some things may appear non sequitur in the framing. We're at a day scene here. And I think, from what I could tell, every scene in the day was a flashback, where every scene at night, like here, um, or the first page, um, happens in one night. So anything at night is taking place all within one night throughout the entire book. But anything in the day is taking place previously and kind of informs what's happening at night. So it definitely jumps back and forth, but it's so coherent and so very impressive. Think uh, Pulp Fiction, but a little less wacky and done and I'll say at least equally if not a more comprehensible way than that I was super impressed by this and the back half being the uh process was just awesome really really love it the final one here just so you can see all the art from all three books bit of a lighter tone more of kind of a road trip feel as you can see from the beginning it definitely leans into that I think this is the most advanced I've seen Guarnito's art because it's the most recent. So I'm sure once I get to they all fall down, it'll look even better. He just keeps getting better and better. Actually, I'd like to show you one page, the first page of each book. There's actually no nudity in that, which is good. So I'll show you the first page of the first volume. Especially that his face right there. It is still in that same style that you come to expect, but it's a little rougher. It's a little darker. Almost looks charcoal. -y. I don't think it is, but um, and then we get to the first page of this, Amarillo, which is the fifth volume, and he has just it's so much clearer. His is I think it's his coloring. I don't know if the line work changes much. From here I'm really pushing it with the nudity on this image but I don't think there's any explicit nudity but um it just looks so much clearer it's obviously more vibrant it's a seam inside a building to a pool but I think it's very much explanatory to his work evolving so Let's see if I can find it non first volume has more nudity than the rest of it so if you look at these pages, or these panels here, I think you can see how things kind of change around. Especially the way that ceiling is rendered, the top here. It's very, very painterly. Whereas now, in Amarillo, I think he would... He makes architecture look a bit more um, realistic. I got, I, I'm probably not going to be able to find a scene with a ceiling shot like that, but... He tends to like hyper detail and um, render pretty much everything in the room, which he's definitely not skimping on backgrounds and at any point. But I just think the lighting and coloring just got so good with Amarillo. And a Silent Hell has a much different, um, much different kind of color palette because it's a much, much darker story. I love this scene in the bar. It's, everything's so muddy in a good way. A muddy color palette, not muddy as in hard to interpret. But I would recommend these. I, I really have a tendency to go into the art when I do these videos, but I would really recommend it for the writing too. It's incredible. It's some of the best crime stuff I've ever read. It's right up there with Brubaker and Phillips. I mean, it's... It's really impressive stuff, especially A Silent Hell, which is just 
non-linear but done so skillfully and uh, I do have an issue my least favorite thing though is these two volumes look the exact same because they don't have the subtitle here so this is Amarillo this is they all fall down I'm not sure why they did that but uh, it's a nice set of books I really recommend it you can read whatever one of them you want you don't have to read them in order but I think you're rewarded a little bit with Easter eggs and things if you read them this book first, and then A Silent Hell, and then Amarillo. And then, of course, going into They All Fall Down. So if you haven't checked these out, I know a lot of people have. They're incredible stuff, and they're really, really nice. Um, I should say, I believe the creators are Spanish, so these are translations. So sometimes things get a little wonky. Um, I didn't really find anything like that. I know people have. I didn't ever get bothered by it. But um, I do know in Amarillo... There's an intro by Neil Adams, and he is actually co-translating. Um, he's co-translating this book, so that's really cool to see uh, Neil Adams. Like, you don't really feel him in the work, but to know that he was there putting these words together is really cool. So, yeah, I would really recommend these books, and uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Bye.